Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. Disgraced Hollywood producer Harvey Weinstein is reportedly planning to flee the country for France, taking a cue from his longtime friend, director, and fugitive child rapist Roman Polanski. Weinstein's friends in the movie business and in progressive politics pretend to be stunned and aghast at all of this. This isn't the Harvey Weinstein we know. I've been talking about these pedophiles for a year. Arranged by their publicists. We're appalled. Right. Tip of the Except iceberg, it's people. exactly the Harvey Weinstein they knew. The same one that Seth MacFarlane joked about at the Academy Award nominee announcements. Congratulations, you five ladies no longer have to pretend to be attracted to Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> When they mock your lechery from the stage of one of the highest rated shows on television, it's not a secret. And indeed it wasn't. McFarlane now says he heard about Weinstein's harassment from one of his many victims at the time. McFarlane knew. So did everyone else. They're all lying about it. Who specifically is lying? Here's a partial list. Pretty much every A-list actor who once worked for Harvey Weinstein. Most of them are now saying how shocked they are. Please. They all knew. A couple of them called the New York Times in 2004 on Weinstein's behalf to stop an expose on his sexual harassment. They didn't know the truth then? Come on, of course they did. That's why they killed the story. NBC News. They had the story months ago, but they didn't run it. Ronan Farrow, a former MSNBC anchor, originally did the investigation for NBC News, but they refused to air it. So he took it to the New Yorker magazine, which published the blockbuster yesterday. NBC News president Noah Oppenheim now says Farrow just didn't have it nailed down. That's absurd. Farrow had videotaped testimony from eight separate women, according to the Daily Beast, plus the New York Police Department audio tape of Harvey Piece Weinstein of confessing. If that's not a solid news story, nothing is. And yet NBC cravenly caved to pressure and killed the piece. They ought to be ashamed. Keep in mind, this is the same company that secretly gave the Billy Bush Access Hollywood tape to the Washington Post during the last campaign, almost a year ago. Yeah, They're share a this, please. Shop, not a news organization. They ought to stop pretending otherwise. And look into it. And then there's Manhattan District Attorney Cy Vance. He clearly had enough evidence years ago to prosecute Harvey Weinstein for groping a model, including that videotape confession. Instead, he let Weinstein go. Shortly after, Harvey Weinstein's lawyer They're sent all Cy Vance petters. a $10,000 donation. Coincidence? All need to be hung by their toes and burned. What about Tina Brown? In the late 1990s, Brown left the New Yorker magazine to partner with Weinstein on a magazine called Talk. Brown conceded yesterday there were whispers about Weinstein's behavior. She admits she saw Weinstein routinely give favorable treatment to beautiful women he was cultivating. She saw him quash negative articles about himself by leaking information about other stars. Yet despite all of that, Brown tells us, nobody really knew for sure. Oh, come on. I worked for Talk Magazine at the time. Trust me, Tina Brown knew. She was Weinstein's business partner for two years and a famously perceptive person. And yet until now, she's never mentioned any of it. And it's not like she hasn't had the chance. For the past seven years, Tina Brown has run the Women in the World Summit, which brings together socially conscious feminists like Hillary Clinton and Meryl Streep to discuss the challenges women face worldwide. A single word from Brown at any of these conferences might have saved a lot of women a lot of pain at the hands of Harvey Weinstein. But Tina Brown didn't say a word, nor did Hillary Clinton nor Meryl Streep, both longtime friends of Harvey Weinstein's. We could go on and on. Hollywood protected and legitimized Harvey Weinstein with the active help of Democratic Party luminaries like Barack and Michelle Obama. But Weinstein isn't the only predator who has found a welcome home in the movie business. In 1988, film director Victor Salva molested a 12-year-old boy who was acting in a film he was working He's on. He can be sure this happened because Salva videotaped the crime. Salva was charged, convicted, and served time in prison. Then he went back to work in Hollywood. Walt Disney Studios, the same company that he you see this shit, people? Frozen, people that make your freaking movies to your kids. There's some liminal messaging. Since then, Salva has made several other movies, including the Jeepers Creepers horror franchise. He's also a member in good standing of the Directors Guild of America, whose top officers include left-wing directors John Favreau and Ron Howard. By all accounts, nobody in the movie business judges him, and they don't. Hollywood is corrupt. The powerful prey upon the weak, and nobody is held accountable. That's the lesson of the Harvey Weinstein saga. It's a world the police don't touch. It's a world that's unwilling to police itself. 
it's far past time for the federal government to step in here to protect the vulnerable, and there are many of them. Weinstein and his enablers he intimidated the New York Times, NBC News, the Manhattan District Attorney. They're unlikely to be as effective with the Justice Department. Harvey take you straight to Washington, D.C., because just moments ago, President Trump spoke to reporters outside the White House, and correspondent Ryan Nobles yeah. is joining us with what he had to say. Ryan, fill us in. Yeah, Anna, the president is headed to North Carolina right now for a fundraiser to support the RNC, but on his way to Marine One, he had quite a bit to say on a number of different topics. The president talking about North Korea, talking about health care. Uh, he talked about Harvey Weinstein and the Access Hollywood tape. I asked him specifically about his relationship with Secretary of State Rex Tillerson and his Chief of St Staff John Kelly. It was only about five minutes, but it covered a lot of ground. Here's the entire exchange. Well, if we could make a deal, at least on a temporary basis, because Obamacare is exploding, it's gone. Uh, the premiums are through the roof. You see what's happening. So if we can make a temporary deal, because ultimately we're going to have it back to the states. We're going to block grant back to the states. But if we made a temporary deal, I think it would be a great thing for people. But it's really up to them. Obamacare is a disaster. The numbers are out. It's exploding like I said it would. So basically, if we could do a one-year deal or a two-year deal... Uh, as a temporary measure, you'll have block granting ultimately to the state, which is what the Republicans want. That really is a repeal and replace. Nothing, nothing to clarify. Well, you'll figure that out pretty soon. Very good relationship. I have a very good. That was fake news. That was fake news by NBC. Sorry. I've known uh, Harvey Weinstein for a long time. I'm not at all surprised to see it. John Kelly is one of the best people I've ever worked with. He's doing an incredible job. And he told me for the last two months, he loves it more than anything he's ever done. He's a military man, but he loves doing this, which is chief of staff more than anything he's ever done. Uh, he's doing a great job. He will be here, in my opinion, for the entire seven remaining years. No, no, he, he, likes, he likes Secretary Tillerson, so do I. We have a very good relationship. We disagree on a couple of things. Sometimes I'd like him to be a little bit tougher. But other than that, we have a very good relationship. 